Il y a un Eh, il y ili un peu de temps, il y a 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 un peu de temps, Issues mata utiale tutu puto nol tato wotu nol tai mi nei ya pisa ma i pisa ma i ya wa a mata ona pei wa le ang ai ulu tato wotu nu ai ai ala nai me vu i e mo me fang ai de ma fau fau e a nga ma i a i tanga tamu tu e tau tamu i le a la i a i le a fia fi nei fia fi nei wo ma na tu e tato po kalame la sui de pa o sui pa o e pa o ai ya tato po kalame o sa mo le so tato wo i e si na me vu i le fang ai de ma fau fau la vie finale, ma e a mio la fa tele vo ile le na ngo ngo to ai va a vo e fitu e o no a ta si de nos so so tu al coin kala yo bi sai ni lo le fe ngo vo le per dindi e a me me mai do ma si ama ni pou le ta to se vo lu fa ta usanga na pou le ta to si ama ni le tai mi le piliota la le piliota le le lo ta la no e le tu sta la ne me le a de fi a fi ne o te fi a fi a e fa ai lo a tu e a o lo ma fa ta si ai Malefiong ya mata mata Tony Brandt. O se ali tu stala New Sila ya Shamani Samoa. Yo pe per tania fo. Ah, tele tu to ina. Ya ilona tu tama ya o lo fa pe mai ele ya le va ngal tu singlo to no tu o. Tu ola na tu ole o ye ole Samoa. Ele ainga la wainga le swanki. Ah. Olona winga e yai la lona pitu sa mo de tula a le fale tua la ole le fion ya mata mata Tony Brandt ya ole ta mai ta ifala lili a ya mai de fio anga le malai malu a le malai malu fala li ya no tiro le mata mata mai sio mata nu malai malu ya o ten malai malu le lo no fu malai fion ali tu stala to lo na yo la lo le lo isa mo nei sa uni a tu mo le tala ina ya po ole a fa la wi lo ina ole tu si nei Yeah, or let you find one in to walk under the palm trees. I don't know, in our Sava de Vadinga in Lalo New, ah, Sava de Vadinga in Lalo New for here in Lalo Isamone. Or a fair feeling, yeah, or a long or to Malo, if I did later, no, 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 It's a pleasure for me this evening on our current affairs program to say uh, talo falava and welcome to to author Mata Mata Tony Brunt, who has written uh, to walk under the palm trees. It's a Germans, the time of the Germans in Samoa, and the snapshots from that period of time when the Germans were when the Germans ruled Samoa, 
um, in 1900s towards the towards the start of the uh, first the Second World War. So this evening, I would like, on behalf of the uh, 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 Hans Joachim Kyle and the general manager Verona Parker and also the team here from TV3, we would like to welcome you on board on this uh, on this show, uh, the uh, Samuel So or the current affairs on TV3. Welcome on board. Malo Matamata. Uh, I can see that you are, you are about, you're heading up to the launch of this important, very important book. It is, it's in, I know it's important to you, but it is also uh, of great importance to the history of the Samoan people. What really, what really came up to you to, you know, to start collecting these materials and putting them together in this, in this form? What really sure. came up to you? Sure. Several years ago, I was uh, revising the Brunt family history, which I'd written for a, uh, a, a reunion in New Zealand. And I went round to a distant cousin who I'd never met before, who was the daughter of a German from Samoa, Agnes Susse. Uh, her father was Werner Susse, who came here in the early 1900s. Her mother was uh, Louisa Hallisau, a local Apia girl. And I went round to have a look at the Brunt material, but I got absolutely fascinated with the photography that Agnes had from the German period. And so I asked her if I could scan that, um, because I felt that it would be important for mm. the Museum of Samoa. Mm. So I scanned her album, and uh, something made me think, look, there must be other private albums private collections in New Zealand and elsewhere, which we should scan and put into the Museum of Samoa. Mm. Um, so that's how it all began. Uh, from that small start, I started networking with uh, German Samoans, mainly in New Zealand. Mm. Uh, now it's extended to Germany and, and other countries. And so we've built up a massive file of photography from that period, some of it really beautiful that we've now deposited in the Museum of Samoa. And what I've done is we put it online in a special online photo mm. exhibition, and now I've distilled it all into a book, um, volume one, because there's so much photography, there's probably a, another volume two and a volume three. Uh, and the Samoa Historical and Cultural Trust have very kindly mm. published mm. this book. And, I mean, if I might show the soft cover, uh, it's, it's a beautiful production that the, the Trust have put together and um, uh, I congratulate them on their work. But that's volume one mm. and we've certainly got a lot of stories we tell in this book um, and there are more stories to tell that people will find, I think, really interesting. I'm pretty sure there's, there's a lot of landmarks as, you know, as, history, as history speaks. There's a lot of landmarks when the Germans were here. They started from uh, the 1900s. The, uh, they developed this, the lands and titles code, and and all other sort of sort of developments and some more. From the from the photographs that you were, were able to compile, what what kind of development that really stood out from these uh, from these uh, photographers? Sure, um, I think without a doubt, the, the the Germans' main legacy for Samoa was the wonderful uh, large commercial plantations that they put in. Uh, the German company called uh, DHPG. the DH and PG. Um, set up three really mm. large plantations, one at Mulifanua, mm. one at Vaiteli, one at Vaileli. And these ran like clockwork. The Germans were able to overcome the, uh, the hot climate and mm. really have these um, mainly coconut uh, mm. plantations running very efficiently. Now, uh, they started putting those in in the 1860s. And uh, to be honest, once the New Zealanders came in and took over in 1914, mm. they kept them going quite well. But all the, the foundation had been laid by the Germans. Mm. And to be honest, the, uh, the Samoan economy really benef benefited from those plantations mm. for 100 years, from the 1860s right through to about the 1960s when they started to fade away mm. for economic reasons. 1960, that was when the, Samoan, when the Samoans uh, uh, thought to bring back self-government, self -government. what do you think, when you had a look at, at this very great period, what do you think, had the Germans stayed in Samoa, what, what, you know, what would Samoa have, have been in right, right up to this point? Sure, I mean, it's a theoretical question, but, you know, we, we are well aware of the efficiency of the Germans, mm. um, and uh, 
they made sure that the plantations ran really well. I, I think there's no denying the fact that if the Germans had stayed here for a, a much longer period, mm. that the economic prosperity of the islands probably would have been sustained mm. better. But we do have to remember that the, mm. the, the, the Great Depression hit, mm. hit in the late 1920s and the I'm 1930s. Sorry. So anybody at that time, and uh, the New Zealanders were the victims, uh, mm. would have been subject to the low agricultural prices right. that prevailed. Mm. So I think anyone in that period from the late 20s through to the 1940s would have been struggling, mm. whoever ran the plantations. From the sub, from uh, all this photography that you were, were able to, uh, to put together, because I can see this is part one, you have organized the photographs. So these photographs that you have organized to be in part one, what can be a main theme that you have put them, uh, all of them under? Well, I mean, it's a, the, the quite different stories we mm. tell. I, I decided earlier on um, that there were so many good stories that I should group the book into mm. photographs with each story. Um, and for me, one of, the, one of the really interesting stories was the story of Leofo Fatu Frost, who uh, was from uh, Fasito'o. Fasito. And um, he became uh, the subject of an unofficial adoption by the German governor, uh, mm. Erich Scholz. Um, Erich Scholz was unmarried. He came here. He took over as the German governor in about 1910. He'd been here before that for, uh, as Chief Justice from 1904. He'd actually developed a great affection uh, for this child at Fasito. Uh, I think he knew the parents really well, Iono Ipovi. And, and Anna Frost, and um, so Fatu became sort of his adopted boy and worked with him in, in Vailima, and uh, the interesting thing was that when uh, Governor Schultz was taken mm. away by the New Zealanders in 1914 mm. to imprisonment or internment in New Zealand for five years, Fatu went with him. Fatu volunteered. Fatu said mm. to the New Zealanders, I want to go with my father. Um, and Schultz said, no, 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 you stay here. Mm. But Fatu said later he could tell Schultz wanted him to come. Mm. He stood there silently while Fatu argued with the New Zealanders. I want to go with him. So Fatu came and he voluntarily was a sort of a prisoner on mm. Motuhi Island with Governor Schultz and the other Germans for five years. And then he went back to Germany with uh, Governor Schultz in 1920 stayed in, in, in 1919, stayed in, uh, in, in Germany for a couple of years. Schultz married. Uh, Fatu said, look, I've got to go back to Fussy To'o and build my father a house and do other things. But Governor Schultz um, said, look, will you come back? And I'm calling my children uh, Tuala, Fuatino, and All I the chiefly to, titles. All the chiefly <laughs> titles. So he said, look, will you come back with some Matai later on in a few years' time and confer those titles officially on my children? Yes. So, believe it or not, Fatu returns in 1924 with 20 people from Fasitoko, 10 of them Matai. And they travelled down to southern Germany all the way down. It must have taken them days to a, uh, where Schultz was living at a place called Lanningagen. And they had a Salfati there. <laughs> and these chiefs... Uh, the, the Matai conferred the title on the children and they also gave Governor Schultz, well he was no longer governor, they also gave Schultz the title of Ayono. Now Schultz was a very private man and this is hardly known that he got a title but what's even less known is that he also got a full pair. What? When he was in when Samoa. Went, when he was in when Samoa. When he was in Samoa he got a full <clears throat> pair uh, but he kept it very private, he was a very private man. Uh, unlike his predecessor, mm. Gov Governor Solf. Governor Solf. So um, he had a full pair. No one knew about it until 1930 when a New Zealander mentioned it in a book. But the fact that he had a pair has been confirmed to me by his granddaughter in Berlin, uh, Aniva Lefman. Uh, so Schultz had a great love uh, for Samoa. Mm -hmm. And um, as evidenced by this, by this full tattoo he had, extraordinary. Have you been able to trace the family of Fatu in Fasito? We have, we have, and uh, I've liaised with Fatu's son. I think it might, uh, I'm not sure whether Fatu still has any children surviving, but Lao Pepe Fatu Frost, uh, who lives in America but comes to Samoa, 
uh, frequently. I had a meeting with uh, Leo Pepe because I wanted to find out more details about his father. Father Samoa, no what no what to know Pele. Oloinoa, Oleo Pepe, Frederick, Fatu, Frost, my first daughter. On Neitu La, a memorial toilet of Hafta Tede. Ya la toast, Sangal Lue, Molfama Popo Inga, Ole Neitus. Ya Luso, ya Joe Kyle, my Tony Prunt, Manisio la Tauma, Sangal Lue, Sa first song ya. Peo tu langa sao yai. In the moal tusima tu inatuya tio. In the while I own a fafta yat to the nay of a nomad and no fee. While I'm fire no away in a natura. Oh no, this for me of a yai yau in the tu langa ya medica. I stay with the manai pear year. He had that to a fee no ill enough for to my lung. My friends of Samoa and distinguished guests, um, my name is Angela Frost, daughter of Frederick Fatu Frost and granddaughter of Fatu Frost, whom you have honored in the book To Walk Under Palm Trees. I'm so grateful that we had the opportunity to come to Samoa with my sister Wilma and to meet with Joe Kyle and other distinguished guests to learn about the publish of this book. We're so grateful that you have honored my father this evening and we're so sad that we're unable to make it to Samoa, but our hearts are with you this evening. We thank you so much from the bottom of our hearts, Wilma and I, for taking this opportunity to put such a great book together. This will help and store our roots and help us to teach our children of the heritage that they're that they are from. Thank you so much. Aloha atu oi, ya Manuel Leaso. Now the good thing about this book is that we've been able to tell this story in pictures, in photos. Mm. I've been able to get photos from different albums, and we've been able to tell the photo because it's mainly a book of photos. I've been able to tell this the story um, in photos and captions. A remarkable story. I don't think anyone knew about this. Well, my friend in Auckland, Albie Stinsner, when I was talking mm. to him, he said, do you realise there was a Samoan who voluntarily was in prison on Motuhi Island for five years in the First World War? And I, he said, his name was Fatu, but we don't know what his other name was. So we drilled down and we dug around and we found out more about Fatu Frost, and then we found photos of Fatu from the uh, internment camp. Mm. And uh, they're reproduced in the book. Wow, that's very interesting. Any other, any other story you were, you were able to tell through pictures other than Fatus? Well, there's the epic story of the Stinsner family, uh, you know, who are well known mm -hmm. in Samoa. To me, it's, to use the old cliche, it's sort of uh, an epic family saga of the turbulent 20th century. Um, Fritz Stinsner came mm. uh, from Germany Fritz. here in, in 1897. He was a builder and an architect. Um, he worked with his uncle on the Vaileli Plantation, uh, designing copper drying mm. buildings. Then he um, built the courthouse. Uh, he built uh, the observatory uh, that's now gone down yes. at Mulinu. Um He built the casino hotel that um, was a landmark building here for many years. Uh, he married a local girl, Mary Beetham, and had a family. Uh, then along comes the First World War. All his assets are taken away. Taken away. Yes. All the assets were stripped. He was sent to Motuhi Island with Fatu mm. and Schultz. Um, the family were allowed to live with him on Motuhi Island uh, because he was ill. Um, then in 1919, they were all sent back to Germany mm. uh, with no assets. They had, to hold, they had to hide some gold coins in a little box, a sewing box. Anyway, they got back there. Um, the family resettled. Germany was in chaos in the 1920s. Half the family and, and the father and the, and the wife decided uh, in 1924, they wanted to come back to Samoa. Now, you have to realise the New Zealand administration was very tough on mm. Germans who wanted to come back. That's right. Only yeah. two German families were allowed to come back, uh, the Dusterdijk family and the Sternsner family. So the Sternsners came back in 1924, 
uh, to take over the management of the uh, Tuvau plantation, which was being run by the New Zealanders. Um, and they, they ran that for a number of years. The Great Depression hit, uh, the father got older, the two sons went out and started managing their own plantation. Um, the other children went back to Germany. Uh, then the parents went back to Germany in 1939, just before the uh, Second World War. Uh, the two boys that were left here went into internment in New Zealand during mm. the Second World War. Uh, then um, they had families. And so we have this interesting phenomenon that occurs with a number of German Samoan families of children settling in Germany and the other children settling in the South Pacific. And that's uh, the Sternstner family were an example of that. Uh, they were mm. a prominent family in Samoa, and uh, they have lots and lots of cousins uh, in Germany. So the split family between the Northern Hemisphere and the Southern Hemisphere, it's quite common. There are, there's some of the Germans, some of uh, the German families are uh, very prominent in Samoa at present. Uh, were, were you able to, to come across uh, some of the, the Schmidt and the, and the Karls? Yes, I mean, uh, we've got volume two and volume three coming along, so um, there's plenty of material. Mm. Uh, Joe Kyle was just showing me his, uh, his grandfather's uh, album from Germany a couple of days ago, and there's some mm. fantastic photography in there. Uh, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of stuff. So you'll be able to tap into that? Uh, I will be, and we've already tapped into it. I've, I've, I mean, I've got a pile of stuff to go on books two and three. Uh, and um, there's some good stories in mm. it. But... It's a lot of work, and my my, uh, my family and my dear wife have to agree to this uh, mm. this big project to continue. Mm. Um, because to be honest, um, I'm doing it as a hobby. I'm making no money from it. Uh, the royalties from the book, uh, I'm donating back to the trust. Um, I'm getting some free books, which is nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so mm. I work full time. So this is a hobby on mm. the side. So you're going to donate it this to the people to the people of Samoa. You're, you're not de you're not demanding any anything out of it. Well, I mean, lucky I'm, I'm I've, I've got mm. a job, so mm. I'm working for, I'm, I'm working full time. Mm. Um, and no, I think it's it's uh, you know there are so few books published on Samoan history. It's important that we try and put them out there at a price that is within reach. Mm. Now look, these books will be expensive because uh, they were printed in America, mm. uh, very good quality. Um, but, you know, I think it's very important that we try and make more Samoan history accessible to as many people as possible. Now, be before, before we go on, I just have to say, this book is freely downloadable on the internet. It's a downloadable mm. as an e-book, as a PDF. So 9,000 people worldwide have already downloaded this book. What we've done here is publish it in mm. hard copy mm. because Joe is old school. Mm. And he likes to have a book in his That's hands right. rather than an iPad. Mm. Uh, just before we came in for the program, uh, for the program tonight, I was, I was told by my, my boss that uh, she was trying to contact, she was trying to contact a guy by the name of uh, Leo Pepe uh, Friedrich. Frost in New Zealand, mm -hmm. and the last remaining uh, person of this period, and uh, and said that she was he was sending uh, his greetings to everybody who was going to watch to, watch this uh, program. Can you tell me a little bit of uh, is this the same guy that you were talking about? No, this is his son. Uh, Fatu Frost died in 1956, and uh, Fred um, I think was in his 20s then. <coughs> uh, we have a photo of Fred in the book. Um, or I should call him Leo Pepe, mm. uh, as a 10-year-old at Fussy Toto. His father's there, Count Felix von Luckner, mm. the German visitor, was there. This is in 1938. Um, so, so Leo Pepe is the only person uh, who is still alive who, whose photo is in the book. Um, we had hoped mm. to have him here for the book launch on Friday, mm. uh, but um, he couldn't stay, so he's, he's in New Zealand now. You could have written. You could have written uh, about something else, but uh, why did you decide to write about the Germans in Samoa? And uh, is it because of your marriage to a Samoan, Samoan lady? Yes, yes. Uh, I, I have to say yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but my grandmother was 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 a swanky, Frida Swanky. Yes. So she was part German. So I've always had an interest in uh, my German roots. Mm, mm. Um, 
Interestingly enough, we have no photos of the first Swanky in Samoa. For all the photos we've got, we don't have any of Julius Swanky. But, 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 but even, if, even if you were from a Swanky family, if you were, if you were married to Palagi, you could have written to, about something else. But the fact that you were married to someone, you know, really forced you, forced you to, to write, write about the... Well, it did. I mean, it's, mm. it's brought me much closer to the Samoan mm. culture. We get up to Samoa frequently. Mm. Mm. Um, we mix with our relatives. I've still got plenty of relatives uh, in Samoa. Uh, we, and so it's, my marriage has drawn me much mm. closer back much to closer. Samoa. My father was born and raised on Savai and mm. Upolu. Um, he Where about uh, A little village you've probably never heard of called Matapo'o. You've never heard of it? No. No. <laughs> it's, near, it's, near, uh, it's not too far from uh, Manase and... Uh, and and, and um, Safotu. Yes, and Safotu. It's next to In Safotu. Between. No, it's beyond. It's a sub village Safotu. then. It's Ma it's it's near a little village called Samaonga. Have you heard of that? Samaonga. Yes. Samaonga. Yes, it's it's almost beside Samaonga. So my father grew up in a plantation uh, at Matapo'o. And uh, then they came back to Apia uh, mm. in the, later in the 1920s. Mm. And then he was sent to school in New Zealand to the Maori Agricultural College. Uh, and um, later on he met my mother. A Kiwi, mm. uh, and uh, that's how it happened. I can see you have two children. Uh, would you like them to uh, to continue on this this passion you have, and uh, for them to to get a bit more closer to to, to their Samoan heritage, uh, in order to continue to continue on this uh, hobby you you've, you've started. Yes, I, I mean, I don't want to force my, yes. my hobby onto That's my right. children. Uh, I, I but would you them. like them? Sure. I've got three children. <laughs> I've, got, I've got three. There's a son in New Zealand. Oh. Um, so, but uh, they have a mild interest in history. Oh. Um, I can't, uh, I don't want to arm twist them to mm. continue in my footsteps. Um, so we'll just have to see how mm. that pans out. They, they are quite interested in, in this particular branch of history. Now look, this is a highly specialised subject. I know. Yes. The pictorial history of the Germans mm. in Samoa. Such a narrow field. Mm. Um, and um, we'll see. We'll <laughs> see. <laughs> now we're going to launch. Uh, we're going to launch this work uh, and uh, give it to the public on Friday, come Friday. And uh, the head of state, who is also a lover, lover of history, he loves history, will be there. What would you like to say to the Samoan public and uh, especially this, you, you have you have been able to put together this uh, very specialized kind of work, and uh, given it's also part one, so there's more to come. There's more to come. What what would you like to say to the to the public who are watching us tonight? Well, I, I think um, I've noticed that there is a, a a revival of interest in history. I mean, I, I keep an eye on what's happening on Facebook, where mm. most young people and young Samoans are very active. Mm. Uh, we've been putting up on the Museum of Samoa Facebook page, lots of historical photography, and there's been a tremendous response. So I'm really encouraged that uh, the Samoan younger generation are, um, seem to be taking a lot more interest in Samoan history. Um, and I think my message to, to the people of Samoa is keep it up. Mm. Right before we end up, uh, we, before we end our program for tonight, uh, we would like, uh, I would like on behalf of Cho Kyle, the Managing Director, and also the, uh, our General Manager, Verona Parker, and the team here from uh, TV3, to say uh, thank you very much and looking forward to, uh, to be with you uh, at the launch on Friday night. And uh, any last words to your family, especially uh, those who are tuning in from Malay Malu? Well, thank you, for support <laughs> thank you for supporting me during my journey with this project. Thank you very much. <laughs> Ile polo kalame e pe ona fa fongai o fa tala noi natu e le sunga le litu stala yonga yamata mata Tony Brandt ya e silo fifoi o le tu langa o le tu inga ba inga le tala fa solo pito e mai solo o le fa mata la ina o se tala e fa onga ina yata e mana omia na tam sa o fa onga e fa e mu fa ina o lantu fa tino ina tu inga nga dong fa pia ma o se fa fte telefo ila tatu polo kalame le fifoi Ile 
Ah, I'm missing your tello, tello, mumu, before your album, mum, the yak, or like a cat as all of my own, you see them, but you said to look, and I'm saying, it told any man in the yatta too. I don't want to look in the tomato parlor, and so I do, who for casting me tattoo, the matter, matter, mat appreciate the tattoo, tattoo talvato, but five times we shone for two, ah, the tosso mer, nepa, I'm going to tell like this album, on voy, on tattoo matter, matter, I've a tie. Il m'a dit que je ne suis pas mal à l'aise. 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 Ma unga moto ya le fe lo tu si foi le fo na fo na kalesia ya amesi on sa unwa ilo le fe unga ya choka ilo te te fo na le le wanga le lo tu vat si o publishing le le tu si le ya on sa unwa lo le le alu mamalo le malo le fe unga tu ya tu o tu bo te mesi se fe e te tala lo ya ya le ya tu si ne ma o se sa unwa nga e o le atatu ah fe fe fa long long o ya le le atatu fa sa lau tu lungo atatu poka ya on sa unwa ilo Yo ngatu stala, yao tene ilo la pola si sao nga ngatu stalo, le ufa funga le mahu anga na la, yao natusi, yao mame umo ye tuto no tusi, le pe yon faa funga le nipo. Ae o le faa unga le na tato po kalamere ne fiafi, faa afta ilo mai mo mai ilo po yon malo malo tato utu nu, la mawo se isfa po ponga ilo as frey le lo aso ne. And before we end, I would like to thank you for coming up to the show tonight. Faa afta ite le lava Tony Brunt, and we look forward to being with you during launch on Friday, come Friday. Thank you very much. Mereka lepas fasa usang untuk malu tato tu nuri nasi asli fasa ifoya.